Our first review is going to be of Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night, which is the television special that is on Disney Plus, directed by Michael Giannaccino. Michael Giannaccino, who people might know, probably have heard his name every now and then. He's a composer. Um, he's done many, many works um, in Hollywood. He kind of has been blowing up recently. It seems like him, um, Ludwig Göransson, uh, who else will be kind of a new prominent composer that you see kind of rising up now? Uh, see, uh, it's like. Uh, him, Mike Mothersbaugh, uh, Bear McCreary, uh, Tyler Bates, they're all guys that have been around forever, but I think they're just now getting their uh, their due recognition because of the projects that they're attached to. Chikino especially, he's done stuff like, uh, like Spider-Man for the MCU, he's done Doctor Strange, he just recently did the score for the Batman. Yeah, the Batman, which I think that really bangs a lot. Um, yeah, so he's he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, recently uh, really been blowing up. But here he's uh, directing um, now. And apparently, like, he's been, this has been a passion of his ever since he was a kid. He did the whole thing of doing the movies with your group of friends and directing movies with them. Um, so now he gets a chance to do it. Um, in a story for Marvel, uh, Werewolf by Night, uh, which... Uh, I know it seems like with this and with Moon Knight and now Blade is kind of going to be coming up and then stuff they did in WandaVision with Agnes Harkness, uh, Agnes Harkness that um, they're really leaning more into more of the supernatural stuff um, and really seems like they're going to go maybe in that direction more with stuff like maybe like the Midnight Suns um, and Moon Knight, funny enough, um, he appeared. His first appearance was in uh, Werewolf by Night uh, way back, uh, issue number 32. So that was kind of one of his big first appearances. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, but here um, you have uh, kind of a lot of other kind of classic characters. Um, you have uh, El the kind of Bloodstone family, Elsa Bloodstone specifically, um, who's kind of coming back to her family home um, and all these other hunters who are there uh, basically trying to all hunt uh, to in order to achieve this goal of getting the blood bloodstone which is this magical item that can grant people you know these special abilities and kind of uh you know uh, allow them to do all these kind of extraordinary things um and one of the reasons you know they're there is also because of after the death of the patriarch of the family ulysses bloodstone it was like hey you know i died I'm going to pass on the bloodstone to someone else, but I have to, you know, it has to be somebody worthy to do so. So we got to have this organized, this big hunt. Um, and that's why they kind of get all these different hunters from uh, around the world, it seems like, to do it. Um, and you also see kind of uh, G uh, Galel Garcia Bernal, who kind of comes in there as uh, Jack Russell, um, who I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but I mean, it's the movie, the, the th thing's titled Werewolf by Night. I mean, there's going to be a werewolf I mean in there. I mean, the guy looks like a werewolf, and he's also, like, silhouetted with it on the poster. Yeah. And, yeah, that's the character's identity in the comics is Jack Russell. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess... It's like, it, it's even it's even in the name. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Jack Russell is kind of a play on, like, a dog, you know, like Jack Russell and everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, so you also have that. You also have uh, Harriet uh, Sanson uh, Harris, who is mostly, like, a character actor. Um, I just recently saw her. She was in uh, Licorice Pizza. She was the casting director. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you saw Licorice Pizza, but she was, like, the... Uh, I still haven't. Okay, so yeah, she was like one of the casting directors in that. Um, she's the stepmother of uh, Alyssa um, Bloodstone. Alyssa Bloodstone is played by Laura Donnelly, um, who's in this as well. She's the uh, daughter of the famous Ulysses Bloodstone. Um, this. Um, so it's a 52-minute special. Um, and it is completely in black and white, except for some moments of color. Uh, but I thought this was a blast, I think, all the way through. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of fun with it. It seems like it's getting a lot of great reaction from people. And it seems like this is what people have been kind of wanting, um, you know, out of this phase or, you know, kind of the recent crop of Marvel stuff. Uh, what do you think? Uh, oh, this, this like hour long special is an absolute delight. This kind of fulfills the promise that was led, um, that was uh, given to us from stuff like WandaVision, like uh, like Moon Knight, like Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, where Marvel is now at a point where they can experiment with different genres. But for the most part, Phase Four has kind of played it safe outside of those couple examples where they dabbled in and introduced like some horror tropes in there. 
if if um <clears throat> if multiverse of madness was like the first step into it this is like a this is like a 400 yard sprint because this is um uh, this is gets hardcore for a marvel disney property and like one of the advantages of black and white is you can get as bloody as you want as long as it's not red yeah uh, which they use that to its effect. I mean, this is like when I was watching the trailer, it's like it very much kind of like a grindhouse type movie of all those old monster movies. Even when the opening of it, um, where you see the Marvel Studios logo, the like electricity kind of comes over to something like Frankenstein or something like that. Um, so it does have that very classic, you know, kind of monster movie feel to it. Um, even when they show the werewolf, when you see the reveal, it doesn't even look like a a CGI creation. It looks more like a guy like in a werewolf suit, like what you used to see back in the day, which I thought was kind of more of a nice touch. Um, and I kind of liked, you know, kind of the campiness of it. I don't think it goes too overboard in the campiness where it becomes like, it, it's not taking itself, you know, it's like, it's so ridiculous or so kind of comical. Mm -hmm. I think it still balances it pretty well. Um, I think you see kind of some of that comical stuff where you see like you, Ulysses Bloodstone, where you see kind of his corpse be reanimated for a second to tell the people of like the mission and it everything. Is, it is, pr it is pretty much the Crypt Keeper. It, it's it, it inspired by that complete bit of like Tales from the Crypt, which I was, I was chuckling along with it. Hmm. Yeah, and you also kind of see a little bit of that also with the actress uh, Harriet uh, Sanson Harris, um, where you kind of see her performance. I think also like she balances it really well, being kind of over the top, but also really pulling it in and, and doing a great portrayal there. Uh, because her and El Alyssa Bloodstone, who's Laura Donnelly's character, um, they have a lot they of bad blood, you know. They fucking hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's pretty much the wicked stepmother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a lot of bad blood between the both of them, and you can feel it. Um, you know, Alyssa Bloodstone, she's kind of, you know, left the whole family legacy of the monster hunting and everything like that. Especially her father really pushed her into, seems like really pushed her into being, you know, this monster hunter. Which you see in the show, I mean, in the in the special, she's very capable. Uh, she is very capable um, at action scenes, at fighting, um, because, you know, you see a lot of these hunters go at each other. Um, and she does that, you know, uh, she she does like one of them scissor moves i didn't see i've never seen done before where i think she leads with her legs usually it's like wrapping around but i think she leads with her legs first and then like scissors and then kind of brings the person down i know i don't think i've ever seen that move before i don't i don't think i've ever seen that combo before uh but uh, i thought that was kind of pretty good but a lot of her stuff i think she was really good in it um a lot of her action scenes um was really well done how do you feel about her character uh her character especially when she's paired up with uh gal garcia bernal's jack russell that's when this special really took off for me in terms of its character development. Because this could easily have just been this like fun, kind of campy, horror-esque thing. But <clears throat> Giacchino, to his credit, he does take time to develop characters for, ever, for however briefly that uh, they're on screen until the action and the horror stuff starts. And fun fact that Donnelly did most of the stunt work herself for the action scene. So kudos to you. Cause yeah. you're kind of a fucking badass. Yeah, because those look like some really complicated action scenes to do to really hit in the movement. They look very fluid. Um, they look very well done. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing her in some kind of more, you know, action stuff if they, uh, you know, if they do it. Um, if they kind of expand her character um, further in the Marvel universe. I mean, there were some people saying that they don't really think that this is in the 616 universe. Do you think it is or do you think it, it it's in like another universe and they'll connect it? through or something like that i mean i think it's still in in the proper mcu i mean this is pretty much uh as of right now it's was meant to be just kind of a one-off let's just do this for fun uh michael giacchino he's a has a huge passion for a lot of these uh, classic universal monster movies so he wanted to do his kind of love letter to that but with marvel delving more and more into the supernatural and with horror I could easily see some of these characters returning in something like Blade or a second season of Moon Knight. Mm, yeah, I can definitely see. I can definitely see Alyssa Bloodstone showing up in like Moon Knight um, through to her history and knowledge of certain things. I could definitely see him going to her. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely like to see this character return. Uh, Galel um, Garcia Bernal. 
um, as Jack Russell, who's in there. Um, I think he plays things also very perfectly, you know, um, and to see kind of why he's there, a part of the hunt is also very good. Um, and I, I kind of loved his back and forth with Elsa Blossom because, like, he really isn't trying to really hurt anybody, you know what I mean? He's just trying to, you know, he's there for a specific reason, and I kind of like that. I like this kind of character. Uh, what and, and that's and that's the thing with the character of Jack Russell in the comics. It's like, yes, he is a werewolf, but he is always trying to be on the side of good. It's just when he transforms, he has zero control it, it, during most of uh, his appearances. Um, sometimes in comics, he's been shown to be like a Professor Hulk type character where he's he's driving the he's driving whenever the werewolf is on. Mm, OK, Um. And you also see like an appearance by a uh, man thing um, in this who also kind of shows up who I see a lot of people are really loving man thing um, and man thing. If you don't know, is more just MCU hey, version. Hey. hey, let's call him by his real name. His name is Ted. Ted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ted the thing. Yeah. Um, you see him kind of come in. Um, and I see a lot of people loving Man Thing, um, you know. And it's funny enough that people say like, "Well, he's kind of like Swamp Thing." Man Thing actually appeared two months before Swamp Thing, because Man Thing appeared in yeah, so suck it. yeah May of the same year, May nineteen seventy one, and then Swamp Thing premiered in June uh, nineteen seventy one. So that's, that's funny when I looked that up. I was like, "Ah, oh, um, interesting." Uh, but Swamp Thing and, and Man Thing, they kind of they have some similarities, but not all that much. But you see Man Thing in this, um, who's who goes by Ted. Um, who, which is his real kind of human name, um, as opposed there. Um, I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, I thought the way they kind of shown that character, I thought that was really great. Um, and how he's kind of this friendly type monster almost, uh, there. I mean, when he's, when he's brutal, he's brutal though. I mean, you'll see a lot of kind of some deaths with, with him oh, that he causes. Yeah. But. yeah. He has, he gets some of the more horrific kills in this entire thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> also adorable. Yeah. Uh yeah. A lot of people I mean, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna be selling the plushies of, you know, uh Ted and everything like that. Kids gonna be getting that. Uh that'd be funny, you know. Oh my god, that's horrible. Where? Yeah. It's like that scene in uh Ant Man where uh Scott gave his daughter that gift and she said it's so <laughs> ugly but she loves it, yeah. I think it's kinda gonna be a lot of people there with man thing, yeah. Um yeah, so I, I, I really enjoyed this character, and, and it's not just like a cameo. It, you know, the character really is a character in here. Um, you really get to see a lot of the man thing. Um, I, you know, do you have any particular issue with this? I was really, I thought it was pretty strong throughout, really. Um, I think with some of the other characters, like the other hunters, they're kind of one note, but they're really, they're not really, I mean, it's a short special, and they're there to be some, you know, some of these people are there just to be eaten and killed. Um, what did you kind of think about some yeah, of there, there, the one possible complaint I have is some of the other hunter characters but again this is less than an hour long this is more of a horror thing and most of those hunters are just there to be meat bags to be killed which when you do it well when you have them played entertainingly isn't a problem but that's something that a lot of people that work in horror often miss hmm yeah, because you have one character who's got like an axe. It's, they're mostly known by their kind of weapons and a little bit of their accents, I guess. Like, because you have one guy who's like, I think he's supposed to be Scottish, right? The one guy with the axe, um, who sounded like he was from Samurai Jack. Uh, he sounded like he was kind of a little bit like, um, you know, you had kind of him, and then you had like an, an Asian guy who's also here, um, who he 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 dies in a real bad way. Um, there, that was kind of pretty cool. Uh, and then you had kind of another kind of David Bowie looking person that was here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a lot of them kind of more just by their looks and kind of about, you know, some of the weapons that they do. Uh, not really all that much fleshed out as characters. But again, like I said, they're just here to kind of be, you know, meat bags, like you said, just kind of be there to be victims. Um, yeah. And like you said, with the black and white style, um, it's able to, you know, get as bloody um, as it kind of wants with that and play with that um, because there's even some scenes like that just splatter on the screen of blood which some people will very much enjoy that you sickos will very much love that you know love all the blood and everything it, uh it it's it, it's me i'm, <laughs> I'm sickos uh so i know so many people kind of love stuff like that um but i mean do you think that this is what people be looking for if there's like i you know marvel's too scared to be brutal too scared to be gory uh, or violent do you think that this is what will people go like finally something like this because you saw in you know something a little bit maybe oh. more adult 
Oh, absolutely. I think um, I think this was kind of like a lower risk project because a, a this isn't a this isn't a film. This is like a television special, and it's <clears throat> in black and white, and it's meant to be a one off thing. So Disney and Marvel they're allowed to take a little bit more risk, but hopefully, just seeing the overwhelmingly positive response they start to think you know what maybe we can go a little harder in some of our like more supernatural or horror based stuff like i think i think if i'm if i'm kevin feige i'm using this uh the reception of this special to kind of tinker around with what i want to do with blade because both of them kind of play in that similar world and both of them are meant to be a little bit more adult Mm. And also, somebody said that um, somebody floated a good idea. Maybe Michael Giannichino for Blade. You know, the director's gone. They haven't gotten anybody new yet. Um, hey, maybe he could kind of come on. Um, and I mean, maybe they'll put more of an emphasis. Because do you know what this is rated? Werewolf by Night is it rated R or is it rated PG? I think I think they I think it's still TV fourteen. The only reason that it is is because it's in black and white. I think he uh, interviews with Giacchino saying that, yeah, we had to do it in black and white. Otherwise, it was going to be a TVMA. Mm. So, I mean, maybe this will encourage them to do Blade as, as an R-rated movie or something a little bit harder um, instead of just doing PG-13. Yeah, a little bit harder PG-13 is fine with Blade. Yeah. Um, so I, I hope it made me encourage them to do that. But I wouldn't, after seeing this, I wouldn't mind if, if Michael Giacchino did uh, Blade. Um, it seems like, yeah, he'd be maybe a good okay. choice. Honestly, just let the, just let the man direct more horror stuff because he clearly has a talent and a passion behind it. I think the thing that is is contributing to why this is getting so much recep so much a uh, positive reception is this clearly wasn't just a let's hire the composer to direct this one thing real quick. There's cl a clear amount of love and passion for the style of filmmaking that is being done on this. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and you can feel that. And it's not so much to the point where it's just completely, you know, kind of going in all on, you know, the, the paying, ho you know, homage to all the other things came in, what it's inspired by. It is it's still trying to tell its story um, and it's still trying to tell its thing and do its own thing um, and not trying to constantly beat you over the head like this is homage to this or this or that. <laughs> um it's just trying to you know tell a story as well and it's like oh yeah but also yeah like some of the things this is where we got it from um so i kind of like that um as well um yeah i thought this was yeah it's not it's not 59 minutes of them doing the fucking member berries yeah um so i thought this was a strong special um i think he's a great directorial outing for michael gene chino this is the first thing he's ever directed uh to my knowledge uh uh, he he's done a couple of shorts and a couple of, uh, and like two other episodes of TV. I think he did a Star Trek short. Yeah, excuse me, and he also did something that else that I literally was just on his IMDb and I can't remember. Um, yeah, it says he did Star Trek short tricks, and he also did a short film called Monster Challenge uh, way back. Mm. Mm. So he did some of these other things too. Okay. Um, so yeah, I thought this was great from him. Um, I thought there was some really good performances, like by specifically all all three of the leads, like Bernal, um, Donnelly, uh, uh, Harris. I think they all did a fabulous job in their roles and did really great. Um, you know, Secret MVP is probably Man Thing. Probably people walk away going like <laughs> Secret MVP here in this. Uh, but um, yeah, but Harry and uh, Samson Harris, I think she did a wonderful job. I think she was also very great um, as well, and she also did a, a got great scenes where she stole a lot of scenes as well um yeah um and when they do the transformation of the werewolf i thought that looked pretty good too i thought that was really great um again harkening back to the old kind of classic you know kind of horror movies werewolf movies that you'll see um something like you'll see like in the wolfman um i think that was pretty good um yeah so for me i would give it um a high tune in for me uh what about you just purely for how much fun this is, especially coming out this time of year with Halloween, Marvel kind of breaking away from doing a lot of the same stuff over and over again. E even as big a fan as I am of Marvel, they have kind of fallen into a little bit of that trap in this phase. And this is just such a breath of fresh air, of just something so drastically different that I hope they continue doing. I hope they take 
a look at the reception of this and say, you know, what, let's take more risks with the uh, different properties. Let's be a little bit uh, more hardcore with our violence and our action. I, um, on top of that, this fantastic directorial, well, directorial outing for Michael G. Michael Giacchino. This is fantastic. Uh, great uh, character work by Gael Garcia Bernal and, um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, Laura Donnelly. And of course, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And of course, uh, Harriet Sanson Harris. She is phenomenal. She is chewing up that scenery like it's made of Halloween candy. <laughs> and this is an this was an absolute blast. Man, thing is definitely the MVP. Sorry, sorry, I keep uh, dead naming him. Uh, <laughs> Ted is the <laughs> Ted is the MVP of this thing. Some of the side characters do border on a little bit of cartoonish, but they're most. The, but the actors are doing are doing their absolute bringing their a game with it, and they are mostly just there to be meat bags. But it's all so much fun. I I loved this special. I'm probably gonna rewatch it after I log off of here. This is cinema. Wow, nice. Oh well, yeah. Um, yeah. I can't blame you for giving it. I was on the verge of it as well. Um, I think it is really good. Um, yeah, I mean, so strong tune in and this is cinema for Werewolf by Night.